Hey guys, welcome back. I'm gonna be working on the back doors for the paper boy and the pole position. I wanna get them body worked and in primer today. Um, and then probably later on today, I might start putting the pole position back together as far as putting the side art on it, um, maybe working on putting the coin door and stuff like that back in it. Um, still gotta do the uh, power brick. Still need to clean that and redo that. I'm not sure if I, deba debating if I want to start putting the cabinet together or do that. I'll think about it. I don't know which way I want to go. So basically, the paper boy is ready to go. I need to fix nicks around the edges here. Typical particle board. On these edges here, I'm just going to use a little bit of that glazing putty for around the edges here because it's not horrible. Um and that'll be ready for primer. I'm not going for perfection on the back door. Just want to make it nice. This one, I need to sand down these areas that I had uh, put the fiberglass resin in. I need to take these bolts and screws out. I want to fill in all these screws, screw holes that they put on the back door because we're just going to use the lock again. Um, so, and once again, these edges are chewed up a little bit too because it's particle board. Um, this down here, really not much I can do about. I'm not going to worry about trying to fiberglass that little lip. Both sides are rounded a little bit, so that's not a big deal. So basically what I want to do is sand down that resin real quick, and then I'm going to mix up a little filler and start filling the nicks and the screw holes in. First I'm going to do is get those bolts and stuff out of there. So let me get that done, get the sander hooked up. We'll uh, knock down that resin and get some filler on the corners and stuff. Okay, I'm going to knock down the fiberglass area first. I'm not going to sand any other areas, just the fiberglass down, and then I'll come back. This is already roughed up because it's chipped up, so the uh, glazing putty will stick to that. And I came to the decision. I think once I get these done and in primer, I think I'm going to start putting the game together, the pole position, because I've done a lot of videos of working on the cabinets themselves, and I haven't done an assembly video or doing any vinyl or anything like that in a while. So why not, let's just get that started. Tomorrow, I'll work on the power bricks, tearing that down, cleaning it, and getting it uh, painted and stuff like that. So after this video later on tonight, there'll be another video of me uh, working on putting the pole position together. So I'm just gonna knock this down real quick with some 80 grit. As you can see, that was a used piece of sandpaper, but you can see how hard that stuff is to sand down. But it's nice, because now it's got nice straight edges. So let me mix up a little bit of that glazing. We'll put it on here. Um, I gotta run to Lowe's while that is setting up. Um, and, because I gotta pick up the door locks for the back door and the uh, upper and lower uh, coin doors. 
the um this guy just wants regular locks my basement all my games have the same lock same key but he doesn't mind so we just get regular ones from lowe's i think they're about five six bucks a piece on average so let me show you what i'm going to use here i've shown you a bunch of times before but for anybody that's new figured i'd show you we're using this uh you pull dolphin glaze the part number is up0714 i have to open up another container i like this foil wrapper style because you could roll it like this and pretty much get all the filler out of it when i use this brand same thing you pull but when i use this one when it gets low i gotta literally slice it open with my knife to get the rest of it out so it's kind of a pain Since I'm leaving to go to the store and I'm going to be gone at least an hour, um, I can use a little less hardener in my filler because I'm not in a super hurry to get it to dry, which is nice. And each one of these pouches come with its own hardener. I'm just using a bigger tube right now because I just have a bunch of extra hardeners. So I like to use up my open hardeners first before I get into these littler tubes. And another good thing to practice when you're using this stuff, the hardener, is to crack the lid a little bit and knead the hardener inside the tube. What that's doing is mixing it back up. If you guys have ever used Bondo hardener before and you just open the tube and you squirt it and you get a bunch of clear liquid out, that's supposed to be mixed in with the hardener itself. So by kneading the tube back and forth, you actually mix that back into the hardener. I don't know, I'm guessing it's like a resin or something like that. I'm not positive. But I always use the old tubes before I open a new one. And you could buy extra hardener tubes. I usually have to buy extra hardener tubes because depending on the time of year or how cold it is, or if I'm doing a repair real quick for somebody and it's outside, like on a car or something, I have to use extra hardener. So I just end up buying extra tubes, which they're not really cheap. They're like eight, $9 a tube nowadays, but you need it. So we're gonna mix this up. Don't stir it. The worst thing you can do is stir this stuff. Stirring it creates air bubbles and air pockets in your filler just so just kind of smash it down and work it around and like i said we're not looking for perfect on the back doors but we want them to be presentable I know nobody sees it, but still. You go on this far, you might as well go the whole way. That's my opinion. And like I said, I'm not worried about scuffing up the back door to get this stuff to stick because the back door is already rough. And we're going to sand off 90% of it, basically just uh, putting it on heavy so that it fills the nicks around the edges. It's the little things like this that you just spend a little time on. You don't necessarily have to make them perfect, but by spending a little time on them, it makes all the difference in the world. People don't think that, but it does. Same thing with a car. Let's say you're doing a car and you halfway detail the motor. Okay, it's not gonna look that good. But if you go and you clean all the parts, and you, even if you just spray paint them, okay, and your paint job's not perfect, you got a little imperfections here and there. Who cares? It's gonna look a million times better. So basically the more you do up front, the better the reward in the end. So 
just what I'm saying is just don't get in a hurry. You can get it done fast, yes, definitely, by just staying focused and staying on top of it. But when you see little things like this, why not just fix them real quick? You already have it torn apart. If you're a perfectionist, it's going to drive you crazy if you don't fix this stuff. It's just going to be something stuck in your head. That's how I get with cars, especially, is I always know where there's a flaw when I build the car, you know, because I'm the one that built it. And it drives me nuts sometimes. But you got to let some things go. And I learned to let these back doors go a little bit on these games. I don't get as crazy with them as I used to. All right, I'm gonna have to mix up more for the paper boy, but I'm not gonna show me putting that on. You get the idea. We're just filling in the edges. So let me get the paper boy mixed up, get that done. And then I'll be back in a little while when I get back from the store. All right, I'm gonna knock these doors down real quick with some 80 grit. Okay, I'm not gonna do the edges yet with the block sander because there's a couple spots I wanna put one more coat on. So now I'm gonna go and sand this one down off camera. Then I'm gonna touch up any spots that I see that I wanna touch up. And then I'll sand them one more time and then we're ready to primer them. Okay, I got the paper boy one all sanded down second time. Um, I'm doing these edges just like I did with the cabinets where I'm taking some uh, sandpaper on a flat block this is just 180 grit because it was already on here. It's more than enough. So I'm just sanding the edges down like this, nice and flat. And then I'm just taking the sander on an angle just to give that edge a little bit of a radius and to hopefully prevent it from future chipping. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this to the other couple of sides. Then I have to move some stuff around in the spray booth. I'm gonna take the uh, Paperboy cabinet in the house um, it snowed last night again. It doesn't snow all winter until the last two weeks and then it snows every day. So I'm gonna have to dolly that up there in the snow. Luckily the driveway is melting. So it's, it's not as bad. It snowed like an inch or two yesterday. Let's see if we can see it. Yeah, it's going down. When I got up early this morning, there was probably two inches on the ground. So it's, it's melting. But um, I'm gonna take the paper boy in the house. I'm gonna take the pole position and the Miss Pac-Man cabinet out of the spray booth so that we can uh, primer these two doors 
and then that'll end this video and then i'm going to work on starting to put together the pole position so that by putting that together i can get my metal parts for my uh paper boy painted i just didn't want to mix them all up same coin door and everything but i didn't want to mix up the parts so mine are sitting over there on that box which covers a heater in a pile there waiting to get uh sanded down and uh primered um or painted rather uh try to think if there's anything else uh that's it so let me get this uh edges sanded and get this stuff cleaned out and moved around and then i'll be back oh there is another thing i have the um stargate cabinet from my buddy in my van that we're turning into a tetris please don't give me a hard time about it um there was no parts left of that cabinet of anything um stargate related so we are going to turn it into a tetris cabinet it somebody had already turned it into a tetris cabinet but they used a bootleg board so um it wasn't uh the right board but he does have an original board so we are going to turn that into a tetris and then um hopefully tomorrow i can dig this my stargate out of here i was going to do it and then it kept snowing so i kind of haven't had a chance to do it i'm trying to think where oh it's right there where it says rygar let me walk around the other way because i got to get this shop cleaned out for this concrete to get poured um it's right over here this rygar cabinet somebody had put casters on the bottom i'm going to take those off and put the leg levelers back on it i don't want the casters because i have a vinyl floor in my basement and this thing will be rolling all over the place while you're trying to play it now on this cabinet the original artwork is under here you can see the copyright circle for the r sort of right there um i'm not even going to attempt to try to save this it's beat up pretty good and i want to show you guys how i paint stencils anyways and i figure this is a game that's not worth as much money as some of the other ones that i did touch up which were um Sinistar, i fixed the original artwork uh bubble was it yeah bubbles i repaired the artwork uh satan's hollow i repaired the artwork solar fox i repaired the artwork so i haven't actually done a set of stencils on the um channel yet so i'm going to be doing it on here and also on this burger time cabinet because this burger time cabinet has a lot of planking in the in the plywood um pac-man cabinets do the same thing where it gets to the point where you have to sand it down to get rid of all the nicks in the plywood because it, what it does is it's like it starts delaminating just a little bit um and also i scored an original screen bezel for burger time that's in almost perfect shape there's a couple little nicks in it and we're going to fix the nicks on the back side with some craft paint and then we're going to triple thick spray it on the back side so we'll have a nice glass original screen bezel for the burger time um and i believe i don't know if i have a control panel or not yet for burger time if not we'll we'll, we'll use this one which should be fine because i don't think it's ever been drilled out so yeah actually i don't think i have one so we'll be using that one and then this is another future project here we have uh carnival i have two carnivals actually i'm going to take the better of the two cabinets tempest is sitting back there next to the gorf that needs to be done um my buddy's got a bunch more games that needs to be done so there's quite a bit of restorations going to happen in the next year here um especially because i need to get a lot of this back area cleaned out so i'm going to quit talking now get the uh, spray booth moved around cleaned out get these in there so we can uh, spray three heavy coats of primer on them just to give them a nice seal on them and on the bottom on the insides i'm not going to touch them I'm just going to leave them as is it's original particle board just let it be how it is so i'll be back one more thing i wanted to do real quick before i uh put these in the spray booth is these some of these holes got some fiberglass resin in them so i'm just going to take a drill bit and drill out the resin
okay there's a little couple half holes there use a smaller bit There we go, that looks much better. So I will get them in the booth and we'll get some couple coats of primer on them. Okay, we're gonna get some primer mixed up here. Um, I wanna put three coats on both doors. Uh, I got another can of primer mixing up. There's only a little bit left, but this is what I use, the 2K urethane primer from Summit. It's a four to one mix and then I put some reducer in there because you can see how thick it is right out of the, out of the container. So I'm gonna, scrape out what I can out of here, pour this into the cup, and by that time, the rest of that primer should be mixed up. You gotta really mix this stuff up well because it settles to the bottom. But I'm gonna get this mixed up. Four parts primer, one part hardener, and we're gonna go probably close to a part of reducer this time because I used the little bit of thickness that was on the bottom left over. So uh, let me uh, get this mixed up. Okay, I've got my primer mixed up. I have the spray booth heated up to 80 degrees. So we're ready to go put some primer on. Um, if anybody is wondering, I figured I'd show you while I had it out, what, what exactly this looks like inside. Um, I got a gallon of, uh, uh, direct to metal epoxy primer in white, which I normally don't have white. So now that I have white, I'm going to put a mixing paddle inside of it. So what it is, is it's this paddle that goes through here. And then you have to loosen this Allen key and this top goes on here. And then that machine stirs it. So basically what it does is it agitates it in the uh, can so that it stirs it up for you so you don't have to do it by hand. Um, unfortunately though, every time you use one of these, you want to keep it in the same product. Um, you don't want to take it from, obviously, from filler primer to, and stick it in your epoxy primer. That's not going to work. So, look, I bought like a dozen of these or maybe a little bit more. I think it was a dozen of them. So that as I got other products that I wanted to be able to stir that I use on a regular basis, I could put one of these tops on it. Um, I'm probably going to get, uh, put one of these on, um, satin black that I've been using, the matte finish black rather, um, because I go through gallons and gallons of that and it'd be way easier to pour it with this pour top and to be able to mix it than to have to always stir it with a stick and stuff. So, all right, let me uh, get set up out there and we'll put the first coat on.
All right, I'm gonna put two more coats on like that off camera, then we'll come back and take a look at it. I'm gonna put the next two coats on real heavy to really try to flatten that out. And then it'll sit and I'll probably paint them tomorrow, sometime tomorrow. Um, so after I get the last two coats on, I'll show you what it looks like. We'll end this video. And then later there'll be another video on starting to put the pole position together. Okay, I ended up putting four coats on because I mixed a little bit too much up for my second batch. I loaded it on really heavy. All this texture and stuff that you see should all sand out. It should actually turn out really nice. The pole position was a little worse. It has uh, these lines in it and all these little bubbles. That's just uh, from the particle board. But um, both of them should turn out really, really good once this dries tonight. And tomorrow afternoon when I sand it, I'll spray it with a um, satin, the matte finish black that I used on the cabinets. Um, if you look right here, you can see like a little scratch. That should come out as well. I loaded the primer really, really heavy over that scratch. So I think once it's sanded, it'll be gone. So, all right guys, that's gonna end this video. Just wanted to show you guys how I fix the back doors on these games. If you guys are liking what you're seeing, please like, subscribe, and share. Hit the thumbs up. I'd really, really appreciate it. And I will see you guys later.